Welcome to the 2024 College Disc Golf National Championships in beautiful Rock Hill, South Carolina. This is a year of firsts. The first time that we've brought collegiates to a college campus here at Winthrop University. The first time we've hosted over 750 competitors. The first time that we've brought teams from outside of North America. And also the first time that I've hosted a major championship. An event of this magnitude simply doesn't happen without the help of all of our amazing partners. Our founding partner in Innova Discs, as well as the city of Rock Hill and Winthrop University. Best of luck to all of our competitors. We hope you have an amazing experience. And to all of you watching, enjoy the coverage. Welcome to Rock Hill, South Carolina for the 2024 College Disc Golf National Championships presented by Innova. This is the second PDGA major of the year and we are super excited to bring you this coverage. I'm Nathan Johnson, joined in the booth today by Nick Hansen. How's it going, Nick? It's going great. Uh, glad to be back here at Rock Hill playing this phenomenal course. Not in the layout you would normally expect, but still going to have some teeth out there today. For sure, especially with this weather, a bit windy, a bit blustery, should be some really exciting action as we take a look at our players to watch in this tournament. A lot of highly rated players here competing for the Division I men's singles title, so it'll be great to watch. All right, starting out a hole one here. Going to have some OB right and left side, but we're starting out with a nice par four. 701 is the distance, as you can see. Get out of that first landing zone, you'll have a straight shot towards the basket, but you will have to deal with that water on the left, sidewalk on the right. Great starting hole here for this D1 championship. Up first, representing Emporia State University, please welcome Mr. Justin Farrell. Justin Farrell kicking things off for us out of Emporia State, like you heard right there was our runner-up last year for the D1 singles competition, so uh, I'm sure he would love to improve on that finish this time around. Going with the forehand off the tee, definitely the preferred play on this hole if you have it. Fading away from that OB water at the end of the flight. And this looks pretty good. Yeah, he's going to be in a good spot there. Next on the tee, representing the University of Cincinnati, Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Tanner Young. Tanner Young out of the University of Cincinnati, last year's singles champ in D1. Also, Cincinnati was able to take down the team championships last year, so pretty great year for Tanner all around in 2023. Those flags in the background absolutely whipping. A lot of wind to contend with. I'm sure there are players happy with anything in the fairway. It's a great start as well. Star studded first card here. Davis York 2021 singles champion. And also the 2021 team champs out of the University of Georgia. Finally, Quentin Borengasser of the University of Missouri, like you just heard right there, the 2022 team champs. So uh, a bunch of players with a lot of college disc golf accomplishments on their resume and uh, should be, like I've said many times now, very excited to watch these guys out here on the uh, prestigious Winthrop course. Yeah, we've got some real gamers here today. Davis being the only one out of bounds here, he's going to want to try and get up and down for par get over these trees yeah the spike highs are into the green pretty common play that you see every year at USTGC if you, you kind of land on the right hand side of the fairway gets a little bit tricky with that crosswind just knowing how wide to put it but not a bad shot there oh and he's gonna leave that pretty short there about 35 40 feet I think it's in yeah, fortunate to stay in bounds. That ground play can get a little interesting with the lake on the right, but also you got some some late geese to navigate. Always a uh, oh, and 
<laughs> oh, beautiful. What a park job there to get his first birdie of the round. I think going sidearm sidearm here is, you know, the best play for a right hand uh, player if you do have that option. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. Although I will say I think this is a pretty strong left to right crosswind. So if you don't have that angle dialed in, it can get away from you a little bit coming into the green. But both of these players just super pure forehand approaches there. Navigated the wind well. Yeah, we kind of saw that out of Davis there off the tee. His getting up in the air and getting away out of bounds. So very much something you have to watch for. Got a long birdie look here. Just a bit off for Justin, but par not too bad of a score on here, especially in this wind. I think uh, anything close to even par or a couple under on this course is going to be a pretty strong score. Oh. There's that left to right wind getting him, pushing that disc just a little bit off the pole, and he's splashing out. Hey, Nathan, quick uh, for everybody listening, uh, can you give us a quick rundown of the format this week that we're going to see? Yeah, so we've got a bunch of different style events. This, of course, is round one of the singles competition. We have a final nine coming to you tomorrow that will determine the winner of the singles competition. And then we have two rounds of teams competition in a, the fun collegiate doubles format coming on Friday and Saturday. That coverage, of course, will be out the next day. Um, so make sure to stay tuned. we got a bunch of exciting college disc golf action coming all weekend. All right, into hole two. 456 feet. It's a par three playing over the water. OB all the way along the left side there with that water. It's a pretty treacherous shot. Um, as we see here off the bat, a sidearm smart to get across and get safe. Yeah, I think the sidearm is a nice safe play. Just put yourself inbounds over there on the right hand side. And although this approach that uh, Quinn's going to have from over there is still pretty scary with the, the uh, water probably less than 20 feet behind that basket. Yeah, one of those things, it's almost if you play too safe, your approach shot is just as hard. Yes, but definitely the mistake to make is leaving your disc outright. You do not want to drop this in the water with never crossing because that is uh, an instant bogey at best. And again, not a, not a second shot that you really want to take. That's a really nice shot there from Davis. We'll see if he gives that a run given the current windy conditions. It might just be a, a simple layup. Nice looking line as well. Fades out a bit to the right. Probably another layup from over there, but a nice shot. Oh, a little water skiff to get back in. Yeah, living on the edge there from Davis, I'm sure. Uh, out of his hand, he was a little nervous, but able to make it, able to clear it and uh, puts him inbounds. That is a really touchy and well-executed approach from Quentin. Distance control on that layup, very important. And uh, I think these guys are all probably gonna follow suit and just be happy with the par. Yeah, our cameramen can't even keep up with them. That's how quick their, <laughs> the decision is. It's kind of nice to have those decisions though as a player sometimes where you're like, nope, I'm just laying this up. Yeah, it's almost the conditions make the decision for you, right? I mean, you, obviously these players could give it a run, but in this weird swirly head crosswind, it's just this early in the round, too. Um, I think these guys all agree. Just just not worth it. You know, it's fun to see some of these holes because some of the holes that they're playing, their tee box is actually... You know, where most people are used to seeing the pros land for, you know, their second or third shot on this property. Well, moving into hole three, this is a hole everybody knows. We have the OB on the left there. We have the, the green in this sand trap, per se, you could, or you could call it. Just going to need a nice flat shot that hyzers at the very end for these right-hand players to try and give them a look. Yeah, this is just such a great disc golf hole. The low ceiling, you really have to be able to trust an overstable disc to get that finish at the end and uh, commit to your shot. Oh my gosh, just a crazy wind drop there and tough break from Quentin. 
does keep him in bounds, which is not the not the worst mistake to make on this hole, but yeah, usually plays with a tough like right to left crosswind too, which is just a very difficult wind to throw this kind of shot in. This one's looking a little short. And, uh, yep. He's gonna be making his way, I believe, to the drop zone. Yes, yeah, usually uh, about a 40-foot downhill drop zone death putt on this one, which, you know, <laughs> as if this hole wasn't punishing enough for sending you out of bounds. Things can get bad quick. Oh, this one's coming back nicely. Ah, uh, but he's going to find himself deep OB. Not very often we find a lot of players getting to that backside OB. But with this left to right almost headwind, you know, it flips that disc over and sometimes they ride. Yeah, it's, that's the other thing, tough part about this hole is you can't really play it safe as we see a really nice shot there from Davis. That's, that's about the best you can do with the quote-unquote conservative play. You know, you can't really just play it out to the right and take an easy par. You kind of have to be, this hole forces you to be aggressive, which is just another difficult part about this Winthrop property. Very lovely there, getting himself in position to take the par. Yep, another smart layup. This is that drop zone we talked about. About a 40-footer. Seeing a couple layups there. Yeah, understandable. These guys want no part of that putt. Just and, you know, it's the first day. There's nothing, you know, there's no real reason to run that putt and be potentially taking double or triple. If you can get out of here with a bogey and kind of, you know, just start piecing together some stuff, you're going to be in great shape. Yeah, there are, there are definitely birdies out here. Even though the Winthrop course is very punishing, it is also very scorable. So if you're able to give yourself some birdie looks throughout the round and just, you know, play kind of safe the rest of the way, you should give yourself a chance to, you know, finish well in this event. Round hole four. Everyone knows this hole that's seen this property. We have the iconic triple Mando here with dual drop zones depending on where you're at. Let's see if we can maybe ring one up here, eh? That would be incredible to see. But it looks like uh, Quentin doesn't want any part of this hole. Just happy to lay up, play for that kind of 40, 50 footer short of the, the Mando. And I, I really respect the decision, you know? It takes a lot to uh, concede to this hole and just accept the par at worst score. I, love I mean, it. if putting is one of your strong suits, though, it is a smart, smart play. Because if you can get it right to that mouth, you're giving yourself, you know, a 40, 45 footer, and you're not taking a four. You know what I mean? Whereas if, just like this one, if you get over that line, the drop zones aren't easy. No, it's, it's almost an unmakeable putt from the drop zone, just the way they have it staggered off off center. Um, so, you know, something like this right in the middle, 60-footer is uh, not a bad play at all. You see Tanner here having to go to the forehand just because, you know, it looks like you could spin a little hyzer putt in there, but the angle is so cut off, it just makes it really tough to actually be able to pull that off. But if you can find yourself in a spot like this, just laying it up. But, you know, he could have given that a little bit of a run if he wanted to. Yeah, I was hoping for a little bit more of a run, but I also don't blame him. There's a bid. Good effort. A little off-center. Had to straddle out and around, but Ooh, another another kind of tricky little lie here. Let's see if Davis can give it the height. Oh, he did for sure. Love that little floaty Anheuser bid. Just try to elevator that disc straight down into the basket. Very valiant effort. Trying to give us a highlight here. 
Oh, we're going to get some over the weekend out of these college kids, let me tell you. Ladies <laughs> and ball. I hope so, especially in the doubles round. No excuses to not run almost everything. So I'm excited to, to watch that as we get into these later rounds of this tournament. It should be awesome. All right, we're on to hole five. 679 feet, par four. You're going to have OB on the right and left side. You also have a Mando here on this foul pole for the baseball field, so that way you do have to come down this center gap. We're going to fade back a little bit right. You have some bushes on the green, so shot placement is very important on that second shot. Yeah, we got a bit of a choose-your-own-adventure situation here off the tee. A bunch of different gaps you can take. I think this one that Quentin just laced is probably the largest of the gaps. Usually puts you in a great spot if you can just miss that last trade. This forehand line gets a little bit tricky, but it is thrown very well by Davis. Puts him in a great spot as well. I would say this is one of my favorite holes on the property over the years, just because there is so much variety. You know, you do have to shape a couple shots back to back. Um, you know, we see some big rollers out of players. There's just so many options on this hole. Yeah, I love it too. Yeah, the roller second shot you mentioned is also a very viable option. We'll see if any of these guys all seem to have pretty solid forehands, so it would surprise me if any of them did go for it, but can always be exciting and that little hillside going into the green really shapes well for it. Tricky low ceiling approach. We'll see what Tanner is able to do here. Oh, that's looking nice. So that's got the distance. Uh, oh, the last tree. He was going to be up there on that top hillside too. Well, maybe even looking down at it. Nice yeah, that was a or so, but yeah, it was a really nice looking shot. Just just didn't quite have enough to beat that last tree on the right hand side. This angle is pretty tricky over here for Justin. He's going to need a big flare skip. Mm, not really any kind of skip with the angle that it came into the hill, but it's got a 45 footer or so. Now, this is a bit sawed off. Can get you into a little bit of trouble here for Quentin. If you end short right there, a couple bushy looking trees over there that can make your approach a little tricky from about 150 feet or so. I like the look of this one. Oh. That is. Another two feet is all, and he's looking at it. Nice birdie. Yeah, now he's just got to. Settle for that tricky little step out 20, 25 footer or so from the last bush. Not a bad scramble shot there. Should have a very makeable putt. See if these guys give these a run. It's kind of tricky with this slides, side slope. Can get some rollaways on occasion. So probably just going to be a couple layups from deep circle two. It's nice to see we've got a little bit of a crowd starting here on day one. Yeah, this was the last tee time of the day, so, you know, if players finished up earlier and wanted to come watch some more disc golf or maybe cheer on their teammates, looks like they were more than happy to come out and do so. Very tricky lie there and really unfortunate break for Davis after two great shots. Quentin's got a really solid round going. I mean, he's playing the course exactly how you'd like to. You know, he's hitting fairways. He's giving himself some outside looks and just, you know, pretty stress-free golf. It's hard to play stress-free golf at Winthrop because every tee shot is so stressful, but he's doing a good job of it so far. Yeah, I feel it's one of those things that if you can just, you know, kind of maintain and when you get in a bad situation, just, you know, take the bogey or whatever you're about to get instead of trying to scramble and, you know, manufacture a par somehow and realistically it's not that possible. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you said, you, you know, this place is very, very hard, so if you can just keep chipping away, you'll put yourself in a good spot. I agree. All right, here we are, hole six. Par four. 
588 feet. You're going to see this area to our left right here of where the drone is flying is all OB. So a lot of players are going to be pitching up to the right side of the green and then across. I've seen a lot of variations of this hole over the years at the USDGC. This par 4 version makes things very tricky as Quinton finds the out of bounds on the right hand side. Tough to do. This tee shot is kind of kind of a tricky one. It's one of those you can bite off as much as you want, but the more you do, it kind of pinches in that landing zone. Oh boy. These guys are getting aggressive. Yeah, we are. Unfortunate, but we got a little OB right and OB left here. Hard to find the angle, it looks like. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. I think we might see it here out of Justin. The, the just short layup short of the OB where the, uh, sh and yeah, that's that's exactly how I would play this hole. Just short, o a short layup to the short T pad, um, which is about 380. That just leaves you a nice open hyzer into the green. Doesn't really bring in the OB. Yeah, I would say off this T box, I'm going mid range or lower just so I don't bring that OB into play if I'm not going for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like you can see that short T pad right in front of Justin there. That's about 360 feet to the basket. So, you know, he's able to just play a nice, comfortable shot out wide and give himself a long look for the birdie from there. Oh, what a shot there. Gotta give himself yeah. an inside the circle look for birdie. Yeah, that's that's pretty textbook on on how you'd like to play this hole. Now Quentin after finding that OB right, just tricky lie, and that forehand just comes out low. And this is the danger of Winthrop, right, Nick? Like the big numbers are what you have to avoid, especially with how a lot of this OB plays, as we see. Davis finding the OB deep. It, it just happens quick if you're not careful. Yeah, it easily can start snowballing once it gets into your head, especially once we make this turn here and get to the backside. Oh, you don't want to be in a bad mental space. <laughs> so hard to tell. Yeah, this is probably the last. Well, we'll see the next hole very birdieable, but then you come into a stretch of a bunch of difficult holes in a row, so. You'd love to be getting at least yourself a birdie look on a hole like this before that stretch, but these guys are definitely having some struggles. This is almost an unmakeable putt here with the tree in the way. Just line it up. Yeah, this right here is about the most unfortunate spot you can be on this hole inside the circle. Putting into this a headwind. Elevated basket, tree in the way. Looks like he's going to try to give it a bid. Not a bad effort with the floaty kind of nose up bid, but just so tough to get the angle right into that headwind. I believe that was a birdie look, too. For yeah, I was going to say, not able to connect on that birdie there. You've got to be got to be getting those when you're inside the circle here today so look at that flag going yeah even this 12 footer is stressful you'd like to just jam it in there but as we all know those can be nicely done Worth mentioning, most of Winthrop did play over par today. There were only three holes that averaged under. This one at a 4.58 average. So, just uh, taking taking this field's lunch money. Yeah, the conditions that um, that show up here are just sometimes wild. I mean, we've I played on this course where we had you know an inch or two of water on the tee pad and ripping winds. There's just so many different elements that this course can have. Here we are at hole 7, though. 331 feet, par 3. You do have some OB to navigate um, around the green. You will have drop zone on the top left side if you are out of bounds. Yep, folks that recognize this green 
normally hole 10 at the USDGC, playing basically from the, the normal drop zone as we see. Wow. Just went too far yeah, for Tanner. Maybe that, maybe that tailwind just pushing that disc much further than he thought it would. Yeah, this is one of those tee pads too that's kind of secluded, so you can't necessarily feel what the wind is doing out on the fairway when you're standing on it. Maybe some tricky wind that these players can't quite get a read on. Davis really hanging this one out wide. If it sits, oh yeah, that'll curl up nicely, give him a nice circle's edge look coming back. Smooth hyzer from Quentin looking to bounce back. Oh, oh skips wow. it out of no the middle. Oh and it's OB. Wow. That that may be Total one of the worst events for him in the last two holes. Yeah, just a roller coaster. Like he came back with a great tee shot here, but just very unlucky to get the, you know, skip he got. Yeah, you'd like to see good shots like that get rolled. That's that east. Okay, good. <laughs> if that rolled away too, I would just I would have walked off the course. <laughs> that would just be an absolute horrible break. But we got a couple birdie putts coming up. Oh no! I think you and I both know that when he threw that and it, that disc stood back up, his heart probably dropped a little. It was yeah. like this is just how my day's going. Yeah, sometimes the disc golf gods just don't want you to have a good time on the course, and uh, I've I've learned to accept that <laughs> in my in my years of playing this sport. Nice par there, I'm sure. Would have liked to see the bogey, or sorry, birdie, I should say, for our uh, the two guys that landed in bounds there, Justin and and Davis. But again, pars are definitely not losing strokes on this course. No, because like you said, everything's playing basically over par. I mean, so you can just play par and grab a couple birdies here and there. You're going to be having fun today at this course. <laughs> uh, but on the hole eight, um, a very interesting hole. We have a bunch of OB hazard um, areas all along this fairway, right and left. There's one circle right in the middle, so it's really about a placement shot here off the tee getting yourself the opportunity to go for the birdie. Yeah, this is another great hole, in my opinion. You really can do a lot of different things off the tee. You see some people kind of play to the first bubble, which is about 280 feet off the tee. You see some people go big, like um, I think that was Justin who did there. and go for that second bubble with a forehand. That leaves you about 3 to 330 into the basket. Um, Wow, that was two two really great forehands out of these guys. Uh, everybody on this card, I'm very impressed with with their forehand backhand combos. Um, really have all the weapons, and I guess you know we are seeing four of the the highest level college, collegiate disc golfers here today. So I don't know why I am surprised, but four really great shots. This is a, a tough landing zone to hit, and these guys are doing a great job of of placing these drives pretty much perfectly. Very nice. We're gonna have four inbound drives there. Not something we're gonna see a lot this weekend, I bet. Yeah, especially on a hole like this. Still a very tricky approach though with this side slope. Oh, come out of there. And oh. there we go. Giving itself a birdie look. Yeah, really nice rollback. Kind of a scary putt downhill with that tricky wind. But yeah, these probably guys probably have about 300 to 330 feet into the green from here, so you can pretty much just throw that same shot they did off the tee and hope that the forehand sticks into the hill. Oof. And that one is going to stay in the hazard. He'll be putting for, for, or for par. Yeah, definitely the mistake you don't want to make. Don't want to come up short. This one's looking a lot better. Oh, we love it. Inside the circle, great shot. Justin now to make it four forehands in a row. 
This one's looking nice. Oh, and a nice little straight skip, too. All right. Like you said, this is plays as hazard, so he will take the lie where the disc is, but with a penalty stroke and drops it in to save the par. What a putt for that Tanner. Got to feel good. Sometimes that's what you need, though, is a really good par putt, I feel like, to get you going in some days. Yeah, I think that was the first circle two make we've seen today on this windy day in uh, in Rock Hill. You love to see it. Maybe that can kind of light a fire in him, like you said. The rest of these guys, birdie looks just not connecting. It's always a tricky putt, that downhill headwind putt. You know, you don't know if it's going to lift or if it's going to drop it, what what exactly, how the disc is going to react in the air. Hard to know where to aim. And then when you're not confident and it just blows away, you're like, yep, that's why I wasn't confident. <laughs> exactly. Because I know it's happened to me. I'm not saying it's happened to you, but I bet it's happened to you also. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. It's If someone's watching and it hasn't happened to you, let us know because you're lying. <laughs> it's happened to everybody. Or if you played you enough disc golf. Holes yet. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, go to Kansas and then tell me it hasn't happened to you. You know. Have you uh, seen, like, the Kansas wind putt where it's, like, the guy in the orange shirt? <laughs> I think we all know the video you're talking about, Nick. Yes. If you I'm, haven't, I'm go in look that it video. up. Oh, you really? see the camera just pan by and you see me in a like blue hat, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I'm in that video standing on the sidelines. That's awesome. But here we are, hole nine. A uh, little downhill action. You've got that uh, OB hazard right in front of the green on the right side. And then you have all that hazard up the hill to the left where you can see Dave standing. Yeah, not to overlook. Great birdie there from Justin. Going to get have the box here going with the sidearm. So I think, yeah, that's that's. I guess that's kind of the play, right? You have that OB bunker that's kind of short right, but I think you know there's the most inbounds area is that kind of pocket or gully, if you want to call it, that's deep of the basket. So if you've got the power to land it back there, I think that's a nice safe spot to land, and it looks like Davis is going to follow suit. I know it's downhill, but that's a pump for a sidearm. Yeah. It is. It is. 449. It's not that downhill, you know? Like it's it's downhill, but these guys are these guys are impressing me with uh, the sidearm competence. We're going to see another yeah, one. As, as we saw in that last one, unfortunately taking that roll down the hill and out of bounds. This one's going to come up short of that hill. If you can get on that hillside on the right angle, it'll skip right to that basket for you. We're going to see a backhand from Quentin. We'll see what the ground play looks like here. This is looking good coming in. Oh, just a tough roll. And they have that OB line just perfectly, you know, at the bottom of the hill. So if you do take that roll, the disc tends to just kind of trickle in there. Kind of devious placement, if I do say so, by the course designers. Smart play from Tanner there to just get it under the basket and get his three and get out of here. Right, definitely a runnable putt here with the uphill slope behind the basket. As long as you don't just hit the cage, I'd say you either got to make it or hit nothing. Unfortunate there. I feel like we've had a little bit of a wind change here between the last two holes. I feel like it's almost coming down the hill now with that Coliseum in the background there. The wind kind of swirls as you, you know, work your way around this building. Yeah, hard to hard to predict here. Very open course that Winthrop is. Um, can definitely change as the round progresses. Got to rely on your overstable discs out here to get you through the round, keep you inbounds. As we see the tap in par there from Justin Farrell, that will do it for the front nine. Taking a look at the scores, it's tough out here in this wind. 
everybody over par, these guys will be looking to bounce back on the back nine, put themselves in contention for this Division I Men's Singles National Championship. We've got some hot rounds in the clubhouse already. James Owen, three down earlier in the day. We'll see if any of these guys can catch it on the back nine. So meet us over there. For Nick Hanson, I'm Nathan Johnson. We'll see you later.